So today is the day that we welcome our new members and we hope we are going to have a good time in this event. So I'm your moderator, uh, Elmer Moika from the uh, world most expensive city. <laughs> I'm connected. Uh, I, I'm teaching in three institutions during daytime. I'm a tenured uh, assistant uh, associate professor at Page University during uh, Weekend, I'm a <laughs> adjunct uh, associate professor in your college and nighttime uh, guest lecturer at UP Los Baños. So without further ado, I would like to ask our president, uh, Dr. Mario Santo Domingo, to give a wel uh, welcome remarks. And andito na ba si Sir Al? <laughs> if ever uh, Sir Al Serafica is here, uh, Dr. Santo Domingo will introduce our, uh, what we call uh, Maraming salamat, uh, uh, Elmer, the, the chair of our membership committee. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Magandang gabi from here in uh, Chevy Chase, Maryland. I'm currently attending a uh, uh, summit uh, for uh, grantees here at the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. And it so happened that what we are discussing here is very much relevant to what we do at PASE. So distinguished members of the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that we gather here today to welcome our new members, 18 full members and nine associate members to PAASE. This is a momentous occasion that recognizes the achievements of Filipino scientists and engineers and the contributions that they have made to the scientific community. Uh, we are proud to have such talented individuals as part of our organization, and we look forward to their continued success in the years ahead. So as we begin this uh, uh, oath-taking ceremony, I want to take a moment to reflect on the history and purpose of PAASE. So PAASE was founded uh, in the state of Indiana on April 23rd, 1980. It's a nonprofit organization composed of scientists and engineers of Philippine descent, who have distinguished themselves in scholarly and research-related activities. So our organization is made up of individuals who hold PhD or MD-PhD degrees or both, and who are in the forefront of scientific research and technology development in the US, the Philippines, and other countries. So our mission is to promote the advancement of science, technology, innovation ecosystem in the Philippines, encourage collaborative work among scientists and engineers in research and development through scholarly and scientific endeavors, support efforts that advance science and technology and recognize and honor the achievements of scientists and engineers of Philippine descent. Today, we are proud to uh, say that our membership has grown to over 650 distinguished individuals. We are university professors, government and academic research scientists policymakers and lecturers in world-class academic institutions in the US, the Philippines, Europe, Australia, Asia. Some of us have the distinction of being elected members of the most prestigious and exclusive scientific and engineering academies of the US and the Philippines, and also in, in Europe, by the way. Our research activities span diverse fields of study, including physics, chemistry, biology, medicine, mathematics, computer science, engineering, social sciences. We are actively pursuing scientific and technological challenges facing our society. And we are involved in the training of students in the Philippines and abroad. So we believe that the youth will shape the future of uh, science and technology and the economy of our country. And a primary objective of PAASA is to promote contacts and collaboration among Filipino scientists the world over and to help the Philippines in her efforts to advance science and engineering teaching and research in the country. So we recognize that the challenges involved in significantly raising the econo economic welfare and well-being of Filipinos are daunting. However, we also recognize that the value of science is ultimately measured by its impact on society. It is crucial for us to commit to extend the fruits of science and technology to benefit our people through education, information dissemination, entrepreneurial activity and commercialization. A high level and expansive perspective is required to establish the value chain from basic to applied science for the benefit of society. So to our new members, I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations on this significant achievement. Your induction into PAASE is a recognition of your hard work, dedication, and contributions to the scientific community. 
As members of PAASE, you are joining a community of like-minded individuals who are committed to advancing science and engineering and promoting the welfare of Filipinos through education, research, and entrepreneurship. Uh, please stay after this program for the business meeting that will follow. I promise you it will not be uh, that long, you know, but it's a short meeting. I would like to thank the indefat indefatigable members of the 2023 Membership Committee led by Dr. Elmer Rico Mojica and co-chaired by Dr. Rodel Barrientos, and ably assisted by the committee members, Dr. Gladys Completo, Dr. Senya Tigno, Dr. Mark Peña, Dr. Rosso de Arca Lahol, and Dr. Isa Yu. So in closing, I want to remind all of our members, new and old, of the importance of our mission. We must continue to work together to promote the advancement of science, engineering, technology, innovation ecosystem, encourage collaborative work among scientists and engineers in research and development through scholarly and scientific endeavors, support efforts that advance science and technology, and recognize and honor the achievements of scientists and engineers who are we are working with, you know, in our community. Together, we can make a difference in the world and we can make a difference in the lives of Filipinos. Salamat po naman. Okay, uh, Dr. Mario, uh, can you introduce our uh, next speaker for an inspirational uh, message? Okay. <laughs> So I was uh, given the difficult task of introducing our esteemed uh, uh, guest speaker, uh, none other than Dr. Al Serafica. So Dr. Al uh, was a past president of PASE and a corresponding member of the National Academy of Science and Technology. He is also the executive director of SYSTEM, you know, the Center for Integrated STEM Education. Dr. Ha Al has a doctorate of chemical engineering from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute as, and has extensive experience with biosynthetic cellulose research through both his academic career with IP, RPI and a uh, company that he used to run, uh, Salos. He currently holds uh, several pat uh, patents, international uh, and US uh, granted patents. He has several publications on microbial cellulose and have presented his research work at numerous technical conferences uh, globally, including the American Chemical Society and the Biotechnology Division of the American Society of Chemical Engineers. He has also been a principal investigator of, uh, of uh, NIH uh, grant uh, and to develop the biosynthesized cellulose wound dressing. So prior, prior to his research activities on micro microbial cellulose, Dr. Al spent several years on protein bioseparations and advanced member technologies at RPI and uh, Amicon, uh, a division of Millipor, which I uh, understood uh, he, he used to uh, uh, work uh, yeah, for. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, new members, old, old members, uh, please welcome Dr. Al Serafica. Thank you, Mario. Thank you very much for the uh, quite an I would say a little bit age introduction. <laughs> that was my life in the U.S. Uh, probably 20 years ago, but it's okay. <laughs> I worked with uh, Amicon in Boston, in Lipore, in 1993. So I would put it at 30 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, but nevertheless, uh, after that, I ended up starting my company in 96, ran it for 17 years until 2012. And uh, that's uh, when we sold the business to Johnson & Johnson. And uh, after that, uh, uh, Division of Synthase, actually, that was our marketing partner for our Dura replacement implant for the brain after a tumor resection. That was the last product I was involved, and it took about eight years and about $25 million to develop. After that, I retired <laughs> and came back to the Philippines as a Balik scientist in 2013. And I've been back here in the Philippines for the last 10 years. And I looked at the roster of members today. I think probably 80% or almost 90% are from the Philippines. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I kind of know some of the names from De La Salle and from UP and, uh, because I both consult for UP and La Salle for the last eight and nine years. I uh, uh, just met actually the uh, newly appointed Vice President for Academic Affairs, the one that replaced Sinj Bautista and Giselle Concepcion in UP yesterday. But uh, yep, my activity has been really more of focus on the Philippines, uh, running a foundation now, but uh, focus on the downstream, uh, on the upstream part of uh, science and technology because I was uh, 
asked by some of the national scientists of the National Academy of Science to not only involve myself in tech transfer and commercialization of research, which is involves the higher uh, masters and PhDs, but also look at the pipeline of not only undergraduates, but also high school and, and even grade school now. So clearly I went all the way back. Uh, one of my inspirations is Father Ben Nebres, who's a national scientist and former president of Ateneo. And uh, he told me, Al, you have to go back down. And uh, guess what I'm doing now? He said, I'm feeding mothers so that their children that they will bear will be healthy and not stunted. So he really has gone far back. <laughs> so I think uh, we ought to take inspiration from our elders. And that's what I exactly do. And but nevertheless, the lifeblood of an organization indeed is the young and the new members who have not only the energy and the willingness to learn, but also their openness to take in new technologies as well as new uh, learnings. That's why I think if I have one message, I've been involved with the US Stride project for nine years, and we are waiting for the Stride 3, which is another $30 million investment of US aid on science and technology in the Philippines uh, coming in shortly. But nevertheless, uh, the Stride project was a good learning experience for me in terms of multilateral organizations. And now I've been involved with the League of Corporate Foundation, a foundation uh, funded by Unilab Foundation, which is a part of the League of Corporate Foundation, and to see how they can be too a part of the uh, uh, the whole ecosystem that we're trying to develop for science, technology, and innovation. And if there's one takeaway I wanted to leave you guys, I, I, I'm just going to talk for two minutes so that you can take your oath, uh, uh, is that uh, what I learned from one lecture from the USA, the mission director back then was Every time they go to a new territory, they have an operating word called CLA. CLA stands for collaborate, which Mario clearly highlighted during his speech. The next one is L, which is learn. And the last one is A, adapt. So I'm hoping that all the new members, both full and associate, take advantage now that you're in Paase. Please collaborate with us. Please learn, because that's the value of being in a network. What good is your network and organization if you don't take advantage of the learning of the collective? Again, I might be quoting a, a Star Trek uh, episode of The Borg, <laughs> the collective. But nevertheless, I wanted to encourage you guys to talk to us, ask us questions, find answers if you have to, and if possible, collaborate through grants and technology commercialization effort. I myself have been wanting or doing it actually for the longest time, but without interfering with your growth, of course. I want you to learn, but at the same time, adopt what you think is useful for your own personal development. So with that, I think I'm going to end it. Uh, you've seen me probably lecture on technology transfer and commercialization, but today I'm uh, one of you, one of you, a Paase member, and hoping and willing and able to upgrade the ecosystem of science and technology, not only in the Philippines, but with of all Filipinos all around the world. With that, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to interact with most of you in the near future. Maraming salamat at congratulations sa inyong lahat. Welcome to Paase. <laughs> thank you very much, all. So here we are, the moment we're waiting for. So for the introduction of the new members, I'd like to call on uh, our membership committee members, uh, Dr. Angeline Lau and Dr. Rodel Barrientos. So may we request when uh, they call your name to say present and uh, put yourself in, your, in the camera, turn on your camera so that uh, we can at least uh, see your face. Uh, so, Anjali, Anji. Okay, good morning all. To present the new associate members. Next slide, please. Next slide, okay. Dr. Annabel Abrera, 
currently assistant professor of University of Philippines, Los Banos, working on physical chemistry. Dr. Abrera, are you here? Good morning, Pop. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Next slide. Dr. Ariel Papiera, current associate professor of University of the Philippines, Los Banos, working on mathematics, specialized in graph theory and approximation theory. Dr. Barbiera, are you here with us? Uh, I think she is uh, here with us. <laughs> Next. Dr. Maria Luisa Delaico, current adjunct faculty of Silliman University, working on market research and communication. Dr. Delaico, welcome. Next, Dr. Neil Jerome Egerguin, Associate Professor, University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Specialized in math education and mathematical modeling of acoustic and electromagnetic waves. Dr. Agarguin. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Welcome. Thank Next. You. Dr. Ronilo Jose Flores, Assistant Professor, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, Microbiology and Biotechnology, Glycobiology and Glycomics. Planetary Health Education. Dr. Flores. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Next. Dr. Maika Krizna Cabina, Associate Professor, University of the Philippines, Tospanos, specializing in mathematical biology and operations research. Dr. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Welcome. Next. Dr. Servinia Manalo, Assistant Professor, University of the Philippines, Los Banos, specialized in chemical oceanography, analytic, and environmental chemistry. Dr. Manalo. Good morning, Paul. Good morning and welcome. Next, Dr. Arland Aizus Tantempo, Research Fellow of the University of the Philippines, Manila, specialized in microplasmology, organ on a chip technology, Obstetrics and gyno gyne Gynecology. Dr. Tantenko. Good morning, Paul. Good morning and welcome. Next, we have Dr. Christina Chanko, Assistant Professor and Assistant Dean of the University of Santo Tomas, specialized in chemical sensors and biosensors and nanomaterials. Dr. Chanko. Welcome. Okay. I think that's it for the associate member. I'll pass the floor to Rodel. Hi, good morning and uh, good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce the new, uh, newly elected full members of PAASE. Next slide, please. Dr. Uh, Emiliano D.L. Aligi. Uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs, University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center, specialized in uh, tropical disease epidemiology, disease modeling and surveillance, and health system research. Dr. Good Aligi? Good morning. Good morning. Next slide, please. Um, Dr. Jose S. Buenconsejo. Professor, University of the Philippines, Diliman, a specialization anthropology of music. Dr. Bencocejo, are you here? Oh, probably he's not here. But next slide, please. Uh, Dr. Maria Stephanie Faye S. Cagayan, Professor, University of the Philippines, Manila. Specialization, Pharmacology and Toxicology, Obstetrics and Gynecology and Public Health. Dr. Cagayan? Oh, sure. No worries. Thank you. Next slide, please. Dr. Wina Jade 
S. Guerra, Associate Professor, University of the Philippines, Cebu, uh, Specialization, Political Institutions, Central Local Relations, Governance for Sustainable Development. Morning. Dr. Good morning. Hello to everyone. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Paase. Um, Dr. Jose Neil Garcia, Professor, University of the Philippines, Diliman, Specialization, Literature, create, Creative Writing, Critical Theory, Cultural Studies, and Queer Studies. Dr. Garcia? Right, probably it's not around. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jericho Tadeus P. Luna, Professor, University of the Philippines, Manila, Specialization Obstetrics and Gynecology, Gynecologic Oncology. Hello, Dr. Luna. All right, probably not around. Next slide, please. Um, next, we have Dr. Francisco A. Magno, Professor De La Salle University, Specialization, Governance, Public Policy, and Sustainable Development. Morning. Morning. Next slide, please. Dr. Mary Ann E. Mata, uh, Professor, University of the Philippines, Mindanao. Specialization, Applied Mathematics, Mathematical Biology, and Epidemiological Modeling. Oh, May Ann, sorry. Thanks for, for the correction, Dr. Mary Ann Mata. May Ann. Well, May welcome to Paase. Hello, good morning, Mayim Guntag. Good morning. Next, we have Dr. Josea D. L. Matel, Associate Professor, Cavite State University, Specialization, Biological Chemistry and Bioorganic Chemistry. Dr. Matel. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Next slide, please. Next, we have Dr. Georgine H. Primavera, Chief Mangrove Scientific Supervisor, Zoological Society of London. Specialization, Mangrove Biology, Ecology, Conservation, Rehabilitation, Shrimp Aquaculture, and Beach Forest Ecosystem. Dr. Primavera. Good morning, and it is uh, advisor, not supervisor. Thank you. Oh, advisor, scientific <laughs> advice. Thanks for, for the correction. Next slide, please. Next, we have Dr. Jomar F. Rabahante, Professor and Dean, University of the Philippines, uh, Los Baños, Specialization, Applied Mathematics. Dr. Rabahante? He's not here. Okay, next slide, please. Next, we have Dr. Tirso A. Ronquillo, President, Batanga State University, and the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, Specialization, Engineering, Science, Research, and Management. Dr. Ronquillo? Good morning. Thank you for the warm welcome. Good morning and welcome to Paase. Next slide, please. Dr. Lilibeth A. Salvador Reyes, Professor, University of the Philippines, Diliman, Specialization, Marine Natural Products. Dr. Reyes. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Paase. Next, we have Dr. Melbourne Talaktak, Professor, Cavite State University, Specialization, Veterinary Virology, and One Health. Dr. Talakta? Uh, it's not here. Okay, next slide, please. Next, we have Dr. Mario Tan, Professor, University of Santo Tomas, Specialization, Organic Chemistry. Good morning, Dr. Paul. Thank you. Yes, good morning. 
Good morning and welcome to Paase. Next slide, please. Uh, Dr. Ralph G. Turigan, Professor, Florida Institute of Technology, Specialization, Marine Sciences. Dr. Turingan. Okay, probably he's not here. Next slide, please. Dr. Clarissa L. Velayo, Professor, University of the Philippines, Manila, Specialization, Fetal Physiology, Cell and Developmental Physiology, and Maternal Fetal Medicine. Dr. Belayo. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Paase. Next slide, please. Dr. Aaron Joseph L. Villaraza, Professor, University of the Philippines, Diliman, Specialization, Medicinal Chemistry. Dr. Villaraza. Okay, next slide, please. That's the last one. <laughs> That's the last one. Thank you. Okay. So welcome to the new members. Okay. And to officially accept you at uh, Paase, uh, at Paase, we would like to call on our president, uh, Mario, to administer the oath taking. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Elmer uh, Mojica. At, at all our uh, new full uh, or associate members and associate members, please raise your right hand and uh, follow after me. I, 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 I do solemnly pledge, do solemnly do solemnly pledge, pledge to uphold the goals, mission, and objectives of the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering or PAS. Of the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering or PAS. As a full or associate member, as a full member, I pledge to work to the best of my abilities. I pledge to work to the best of my abilities. And in a collaborative effort with the PAAS Executive Board. And in a collaborative effort with the PAAS Executive Board. And members in the Philippines and around the world. And members in the Philippines and around the world. To promote the advancement of science, engineering, and technology among scientists and engineers of Philippine descent. To promote the advancement of science, science engineering, engineering, and technology among scientists and engineers of Philippine descent. To support the advancement of research and development through scholarly and scientific endeavors. To support the advancement of research and development through scholarly and scientific endeavors. To recognize and honor the achievements of scientists and engineers of Philippine descent. Recognize, recognize and honor the achievements of scientists and engineers of Philippine descent. And most importantly, to work to increase the development of science and technology in the Philippines. And most importantly, to work to increase the development of science and technology in the Philippines. And the training of scientists will shape the future of science and technology in the Philippines. And the training, the training of scientists, scientists will, will shape the future of science and technology in the Philippines. So help me God. Oh, yeah. oh, help me God. So congratulations to all our full and associate members. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. And we hope to engage with you and we hope you will engage with us in uh, the coming uh, days. So please uh, attend our uh, business meeting that will be uh, starting at 9. And of course, our APAMs, you are all welcome to attend. Salamat po. Thank you, President Bale. All full again. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. 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 Can we have a photo of now before we continue? Can we have a photo of Everyone is still happy and uh, oh, open excited. Your, <laughs> yes. your camera. <laughs> camera, open the cameras. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. One, two, three. Smile. Okay, Don. Thank you. Salamat. Welcome, Thank you. Georgie. Yes. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Everyone. Okay, congratulations.
Congratulations, uh, everyone, so to, to know more about the PAASE and the reason why we have this event, uh, I would like to call uh, Dr. March Peña to give uh, like a primer about PAASE. We call it a PAASE 101. Okay, March? Can I share? Okay, you can so have all the time, March. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go fast. I uh, welcome everybody. I'm March Pena. I'm currently a member of the BOD. I've been doing a lot of roles at Paase. I was a member of the chair, uh, the membership committee, as well as chair and chair of the board. So sari sari ang roles ko. So today my role is to introduce you to Paase, the organization that you have just been inducted into. So what are we all about? This is why we created this PAASE 101. Uh, what is PAASE? And as Mario has uh, indicated at the very beginning, uh, it is the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering, which is a nonprofit organization uh, who um, has distinguished, uh, is um, composed of scientists and engineers of Philippine descent who have distinguished themselves in scholarly and research related activities. So it was first founded in the state of Indiana in April 23, 1980, and then it was reincorporated in the state of Maryland uh, in 2021. And so the goals of PAS should be familiar to you because that is the oath that you have just taken to promote the goals of PAS, which is to promote advancement of science and technology, encourage collaborative work among science and engineers of Philippine descent in research and development, through scholarly and scientific endeavors, and then support efforts that advance science and technology, and most importantly, recognize and honor the achievement of scientists and engineers of Philippine descent. And you'll see as you participate in many of the past activities that we are true to these goals, and everybody is passionate about promoting these goals. This is something I learned when I first joined PAASE, and uh, it has actually propelled my participation in the organization since I joined it back in, I think it was 2014. So uh, PASA history, as uh, Mario has indicated, it was founded in 1980 at Purdue University. Uh, the first conference is at Silahis Hotel in Manila, and it was back in January 6 to 8 in 1981. And the founder is Dr. Severino, Se Severino Co. And there were 20 other founding members who founded this organization with him. And so uh, here is a source, uh, and I think Mario has sent this to everybody, a brief history of the of uh, uh, the, the development of uh, PAASE and its history, uh, which we are now celebrating at our 43rd anniversary. So we've been around for 43 years. Uh, some PAASE trivia, uh, one of the founding members was Leon Chua, PhD. Uh, he actually received the 2020 Julius Springer Prize for Applied uh, uh, Physics from the American Advancement for uh, uh, AAAS. And his daughter is actually Amy Chua, who is the, um, the author of this well-known book called um, Tiger Mother. So just some trivia. Uh, I'm sure Marjo, Mario will update us with a lot of those. So what does PASI offer to its members? First of all, we offer a lot of knowledge and skills development. Uh, if you've been around PAASE, you're probably familiar with our webinars. There are a lot of webinars from our experts, fireside chats that address a lot of important issues that are relevant to us. Uh, we've had this for um, many issues like COVID and how we could actually participate in um, uh, dealing with this disease when it came out. We have conferences, namely the APAMS, which happens every year and alternates between the Philippines and the United States and we have also developed the online component of this uh, since the COVID uh, epidemic back in uh, when we had our 40th anniversary. We also offer a lot of networks and relationships. We have what we call as research expertise cluster membership, which I'll talk about in a little bit. There are a lot of interdisciplinary projects, policy advocacies, and most importantly, we offer a lot of mentoring, particularly to our young members and their students and upcoming members. And you will see a lot of that happening in the organization. We also provide training, publication, material resources. We have workshops, write shops. 
Uh, we have the Sai Eng, which is the official journal of the organization. And last night, um, Gobet Advincula actually gave um, a presentation about how to publish in Sai Eng. And we encourage you to participate in this so that we can bring uh, this to prominence and increase the impact of this journal. There are postdoctoral opportunities that can be provided to you because a lot of our members have their own labs in the United States and around the world. And just by knowing these people, uh, you can actually uh, provide opportunities for postdoctoral training for your students and a lot of your uh, personnel that are in your, uh, uh, in, uh, in your labs. Small funding opportunities, and I'll go to that in another slide, uh, discovers curricular material development, position paper development, conference sponsorship, and conference participation. Human capital, membership experience and skills, uh, for instance, assets like education, training, intelligence, and leadership. You will find a lot of this among our PAASA members. Sometimes it's kind of intimidating when you see the distinguished members of PAASA. It's hard to talk to them, but being a member of the organization actually opens up these opportunities. Social capital is another thing that we offer. We have members' networks and relationships, particularly when you participate in many of the webinars and conferences. This open up a lot of these avenues. And material capital, members' material goods or fixed assets which contribute to scientific production and process, which includes lab spaces and instruments. Um, currently, our officers are, as you have seen, Dr. Mario Santo Domingo, who was our president from 2022 to 2023. Our uh, president uh, serves a two-year term. And then Gladys, Dr. Gladys Completo, is our vice president and president elect. So when Mario is done with his presidency, Gladys will take over. So basically the two year term that Gladys has as a vice president uh, is training ground for her to become the next president and also assures continuity of many of the projects that we have. Uh, Lulu, Dr. Lourdes Harold has been our outstanding secretary for many years. And so she keeps the records of the organization. We don't know what to do without her. And the same thing goes for Dr. Lisa Verata, who is our current treasurer, who keeps tracks of all our material assets and our, I guess, our riches and how they are distributed to support the many activities of PAASE. And so if you're interested in any of these offices, we would like you to uh, be involved in this, in this because you know, we are going older and so we need the younger generation to take over. And so this is a good training ground for learning what PAASI is and how we can move it into the future. And so this, uh, we have a PAASI board of directors that is composed of nine members. Uh, these are the current members of the uh, board. And so the board of directors serve a term of three years each and they are, uh, um, uh, how do you call it? Three. Uh, BOD members come on and three go off. And this also ensures that um, there is continuity in the policy projects and policies. And there is, um, uh, we don't have to reinvent ourselves each time when we elect officers. So if you want to actually learn more about the organization, this is a good training ground. And I can tell you that I've been on this board, I guess this is my third term, and but um, it's really a great opportunity to participate and be involved uh, in the organization. Um, PASI members, uh, we are now 611 strong. Mario, are we 611 or 650? Uh, from the last uh, membership that we have, we had 580 full and associate members. And so with your induction today, we are now up to 607 plus four honorary members. So we are now 611 strong. And I'd like to show this slide because at the beginning, uh, we were loosely organized. It was very hard to talk to each other because it was hard to find who had similar interests. And so a few years ago, I think it was the, uh, four years ago, maybe during the term of Giselle, we organized ourselves into what we call as research expertise clusters. And that's what you had to choose when you became a member. So these are our research expertise clusters. And so this puts um, scientists of similar interest together so that it's easier for you to communicate with each other. But that doesn't mean that you communicate only with like-minded people because this also provides opportunities to collaborate with other RECs. And in fact, we have members who are parts of different RECs. 
for instance, ecology, you can participate with mathematical sciences and so on and so forth. So it becomes easier to collaborate with people. And more recently, we have actually made um, in, the, uh, in the next APAMS that's coming up, we have created clusters of clusters that align ourselves with uh, Pagtanao 2050, which is one of the NAST uh, projects uh, so that we can uh, be agile in meeting the needs of the Philippines, uh, uh, advancement for science and technology in the Philippines. And so these are some of the projects that PASI has. We have graduation, education assistance, educational materials, paper production, research training, technology transfer, collaborative projects. And I invite you to go to our webpage to look at details of this and also how much you can give in support of this and what are the caps for each of this. So we have a lot of projects this year. We also have partnerships and collaborations, not just in the Philippines, but in many institutions across Southeast Asia. Uh, a couple of years ago, we signed a memorandum, we signed memorandum of um, understanding with each of these universities to exchange expertise and personnel. And that is coming to fruition now. Um, we have visited universities uh, in Southeast Asia. They've come to the Philippines. And this is now coming into fruition. Um, this is our journal, Sciang Journal. It used to be the Philippine Letters, but uh, we wanted it to be a more global uh, journal. So it's now a Sciang Journal. And um, like I said, Gobit gave something, uh, a talk about this yesterday, and we invite you to publish in this journal to increase its visibility and impact factor. Um, finally, um, PASI is 40 years young, 43 years, years young. We're celebrating our 43rd anniversary. And a couple of days ago, we had what we call as the President Summit. And you can see that um, many of the past presidents participated in it. And we came together, well, I'm not one of the presidents, but I just hang around with presidents. <laughs> but um, everyone came together. And even though they are no longer officers of the organization, they're very enthusiastic in doing, looking forward to the future of Paase. You can see the smiles on their faces from this picture, but how excited they are for the future of Paase. So as you, are become, as you become members today of Paase, uh, we invite you to join us in that future and help us to make it a reality. And so with that, angham at kaalaman para sa bayan, that is our motive, welcome to Paase. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marge. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a roll call uh, for short messages from former Paase uh, presidents or present BOD. So I would like to call on K, Dr. K. Abiso. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, so, I just want to welcome all our new members. And um, it's really exciting to keep on ha having new members in this group. So, you've seen how dedicated um, the board of directors are, the past presidents are, and all other mem previous members of PASE. So we really look forward to your contribution uh, to, the, to the continuous growth of this organization. So let's keep the fire burning and um, we hope that we will always have a very engaging um, organization. So welcome everyone. Okay. Thank you very much, Kay. And I would like to call on our ever reliable and energetic secretary, Mom Lulu Harold. <laughs> okay, uh, co congratulations to everybody. You will hear me talk later on how to be active because I'm a nagger, you notice that? <laughs> I nag and nag and stay, stay because I'm gonna nag you later how to be active. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Mom Lulu. And also, uh, Board of Director member, Sir Eno. Uh, good, good morning and uh, good evening to all our members. Uh, congratulations to our new associate and full members. As mentioned earlier in the PAASE 101, there are a lot of opportunities where you can actively participate. I encourage you to uh, participate in any of these activities and uh, collaborate, learn, and adapt, as mentioned by uh, Al. Congratulations to everybody. 
Okay, thank you, Sir Ino. And also, I would like to call the others who are always active. Uh, this is uh, what we call spontaneous. Uh, okay, they, uh, I didn't uh, tell them to give a short message. Mom, uh, uh, Mom Anne Villalobos, I know you're always active in Paase, so maybe short message from you. Uh, good morning to everyone, uh, especially for the new members of Paase. I'm here in the U.S. right now. Uh, I'm really looking forward to working with you. So looking forward to your growth with Paati. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mom Ann. So I'm still looking. Scanning. Uh, okay. Uh, our uh, member of our, what we call membership yes, committee, Rosalie. Mom Rosalie Law Hall. <laughs> Hello, congratulations to all our members. Thank you all for the for putting in the work. Elmer, particularly, thank you. And uh, mm -hmm. Lulu for the uh, election. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ma'am Rosalie. And also, I would like to call uh, Sir Jun La Pena. Uh, after uh, Dr. Concepcion, he had the most number of nominees. Sir Jun. Oh, wow. <laughs> La Pena. <laughs> Are you there? No, Joey. Yeah, what's that? Uh, no, Joey Lapena. Okay. Sir? <laughs> so it's, uh, okay, there. I guess it's sir. We, um, maybe Kokai? Short message, sir. No, see, sir, I know, Joey, nag, nag, nasa camera na siya. Ah, okay. you have a That's short right. message for our new members? You nominated several of them. <laughs> sir, uh, Jose Lapena. Ah, Nakamute po kayo, sir. Nakamute, sir. Hindi po namin narinig message niyo. <laughs> oh, there. Uh, mabuhay po ang mga bagong kasabi ng paase. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, he's the first one to nominate. In fact, uh, yung lumabas yung list, it's just him and me having nominees. Then we're worried. Oh, we just have seven new members. Okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, asan si, uh, si John, uh, uh, Popoy Dison from Bataan, Peninsula State U. Maybe you can say something. Okay. So, si Sir uh, uh, Silverio Cabellon, I know you're always active. Maybe you can say something. So in this case, uh, I would like now to turn the floor uh, for the closing uh, remarks to our president-elect, uh, Gladys Completo. Okay. okay, thank you very much again. Congratulations to our new members. Welcome to our Paase family. So I know you've been bombarded with a lot of information, but I just want to share some slides, okay, to inspire you more to be part of our family. So let me just... Um, share this okay sorry okay um again um if you um so that you remember and you, if you want more details about our uh, organization this is our website and this has been it is really new uh, i mean um renovated um changed and then it's user friendly so you can see the announcements and the other members or webinars for um far side chats and all other information about the previous conferences. So aside from the our, um, website, we also have a lot of social media. Um, we are part of the social media. We are a member of Facebook. Please join the Filipino scientists. We also have Twitter, Instagram, okay, and we have YouTube channel where you can see the past um webinars. And even some um and important events. So please do join all of this and follow all of our social media accounts. Okay. And also, as um Marge mentioned, we have the rec um rec council, and these are the all the rec coaches. If you notice, we always have coaches because we are all volunteers, and together with Marge, okay, we are the rec council coaches that leads um this all clusters so you may join several recs please just let us know i don't have the email addresses of the co-chairs 
you can just email us and we can direct you and introduce you if you want to join one of these um, clusters. Okay. Now, again, I'd like to introduce the membership committee, Elmer Mojica and Rodel Variantos. They are the, um, Elmer is the chair and Rodel is the co-chair and these are the members of the committee. Again, thank you for um, being part of our, um, being part, being the new members. And now we encourage you to um, nominate new members as well. So um, starting last year, we actually uh, do call for nomination twice a year now. So this at the um, second quarter or third quarter of the year, please, um, we encourage you to nominate new members of PAASE. Again, so what are the, the perks of being a PAASE member? Uh, Marge already told you about the, uh, you can be, be an active member of REF and you can give webinars and you can give also, you can be also part of the far side chats. And we encourage you to attend the annual conference. So this year it was, it will be scheduled this July. Okay, so for the new members, please expect some invitation to give talks. And also we encourage you to pay your membership dues um, that is part of the letter that we sent you. A very important project that we are working on now is we encourage, we really would like SciM Journal to be more visible. So for uh, if, you're, if you're interested in having a special issue in SciM, please let us know. Uh, we encourage especially um, the most of you are really um, occupying good positions, high positions. If you would like a special issue from your university and a specific expertise, please let us know and we can have that special issue. Aside from that, you can also mentor young researchers to publish papers and you can serve as reviewer of the SciM journal. Okay, and then you already know this, we can, you can be a Balik scientist, you can be an RD lead and you can host training programs. So just be involved in Paasi projects. And as what um, Al said, we need to collaborate, learn and adapt. And um, how do you do that? By being active in all of our um, activities. Be involved in some of our projects. You can even come up with your own initiatives. Just present it to us, send us an email, and we can present it to the board of directors, and we can start that. And also we encourage um, donation because remember we are just all volunteers here and to finance all our projects and initiatives, we need money. Okay. And, uh, so, and of course, we welcome volunteers to be part of all our committees, all right? And for our webinar, we have themes and these based on the UN SDGs. So these are just some of our themes um, during the first quarter. Okay, and these are our speakers. And then we, these are the next themes for the next quarter. So for April, this is on decent work and economic growth. And also we are celebrating our 43rd anniversary. And May and June involves energy and infrastructure. For the third quarter, these are, these are on life below water and life on land. So please expect some, um, um, Oh, you, ex you please expect invitations from us, okay, that you are encouraged to present your research so that we will know more about what you're working on and we can introduce you to the, our experts so you can have uh, collaborative projects with them. Okay, and the last um, themes will be on food security and every November we celebrate One Health and obviously from learning from each other, we could forge new partnerships. So these are the themes. And if you have some um, themes in mind for next year, please let us know. Okay. And just in time, next month, we will be having um, a webinar by Dr. Darlene Dalisai. And this in collaboration with UMASA. So um, we also would like to collaborate with other organizations, not just UMASA. If you're... Um, an officer of other professional organizations, we will we encourage you to co-sponsor with us so that we can present, we can um, sponsor webinars with, um, with you. Again, as Mario mentioned, please save these dates. 
our next um, conference this year is scheduled June 27 to July 1. It's celebrating our 43rd anniversary with the theme Reimagining the Training of the 21st Century STEAM Workforce. And our deadline has been extended again and again. The, next, the extension is this is until April 30. So we encourage you to submit our abstracts and also please encourage your graduate students to submit abstracts for poster presentations. And lastly, I would like to again reiterate and remind everyone about PAAS's advocacy of volunteerism. We are all volunteers here and we am challenging the new members Okay, please unleash your inner scientist volunteer. Let us all work together and do science for the greater good so that we can multiply our impact. Thank you. Welcome again to the new members. Okay, so before I turn over uh, the program to the business meeting, I would just like to say uh, I'm so happy uh, being this is my first time as a chair of the membership committee, I'm happy of your journey from a nominee uh, to finally becoming a member at PAASE. And I would like to thank the, the members of the committee, uh, Ma'am Senya, Ma'am Rosalie, Angie, Rodel, Isa, and Marge, former uh, chair of the membership committee. They're very helpful uh, in giving me all the materials from the time that they are the chair. Uh, Gladys, uh, Mario, Mom Lulu also for all the guidance. It was really hard uh, for me last week because I don't know if you heard the news. There's a building that collapsed near my school and how was the <laughs> chair and uh, student affairs there. So I, we have to make sure that our students are safe, but good thing everything went well. It's just the building, not our building, the the, 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 park, <laughs> the, the parking area that, that, that fell. But the, one of the building is closed until now, okay? So maraming maraming salamat, uh, welcome, and congratulations. So sana uh, we can uh, uh, be with, uh, you can join us in our activities. And it was, it's really a good, uh, we, we could say, experience. I've been here at uh, the same time with March uh, 2014, okay? And I'm still here until now. So uh, thank you very much. So I'll turn over now the uh, program to Mario. So as I promised to those who said, uh, what time will uh, we finish? Oh, we finish by nine. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Maraming salamat, uh, Elmer. We have like two more minutes before we start our business <laughs> meeting. Uh, Sana po, you can stay. Uh, we promise this will not really be a long meeting. Uh, we know from research that uh, our meeting, especially virtual meeting, should not be more than one hour. It, it will have to be more than one hour. We have to take a break. Like after 55 minutes, we're not too far from the ideal. So, but then let's. Let's use this two minute uh, window to breathe uh, before we start our business meeting. Salamat po. For the new members, please stay. Uh, please, uh, please stay po. Uh, Okay, magandang uh, umaga po sa inyong lahat. Magandang gabi uh, from here in uh, the uh, East Coast of uh, uh, USA. I know uh, for uh, most of us here, uh, we've been here for uh, uh, a bit or a little more than an hour, but please uh, stay with us, please bear with us. This is very important. Uh, traditionally, we are holding our business meetings uh, uh, during APAMS, 
but uh, I made an executive decision and in consultation with the board that uh, perhaps we should uh, uh, do uh, the business meeting outside of APAM so we can prepare for it better uh, so that there will be more participation uh, and so that uh, our uh, uh, discussions, you know, will uh, uh, be uh, more focused and uh, that uh, hopefully uh, this will continue and we'll have like uh, minutes for this business meeting uh, for next year's uh, business meeting. Uh, for this particular meeting, Paul, I prepared uh, this uh, agenda, but first we need to call the meeting to order. So we have uh, our uh, uh, vice president, uh, uh, and President-elect, Dr. Gladys Completo. We have uh, our secretary, uh, Dr. Uh, Lourdes Hemp. Uh, we also uh, should have here uh, Dr. Lisa Virata, our uh, uh, treasurer. And of course, we have our BOD chair, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ino Lansigan, and some of our uh, board members are here too, including March Pena, Al Serafica, and of course, our esteemed members. We are now about uh, 43. So uh, I'm now calling to order this meeting, and this is our uh, simple agenda. I'd like to ask for a motion to approve, or if you have any suggestions about other topics or items that we need to include uh, in our meeting, uh, please uh, do so. Move I move for the approval of the minutes, uh, of the uh, agenda for the business meeting. Excellent. Again, with the motion. Thank you. It has been uh, moved uh, and seconded that we adopt this agenda. Uh, the third part of the meeting is the secretary's report. In lieu of the uh, minutes of uh, last business meeting, uh, we decided, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Lulu Harold and I, to make, uh, call it secretary's report. So she will talk about what uh, uh, we have discussed during the last uh, uh, general uh, assembly. Uh, and so I requested her to uh, 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 give us uh, updates of, of, of those uh, discussions. Uh, uh, right, Lulu, you prepared some, some uh, materials. Can I share it now? Yeah. Uh, it says here I cannot participate, start oh, screen. Yes. Can she allow me to screen yeah. share? Uh, Fab, can you allow uh, Lulu to uh, share her screen? Oh, here we go. I got it. Okay. Oh, I just like to welcome the new members. Um, Oh, wait, I should be doing what? Uh, start slideshow or something? Wait a minute. Can you see it? No. Yes, yes. we can. Yes. We can, can see it. Can you see it? Okay. Yes. Where is the slideshow? Start slideshow in my thing. Anyway, I'll just go through this because this is very similar. Can you read it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, welcome to okay. the new member. I mean, okay, the thing is, a lot of the things I have here was done beautifully by two people, Marge and Gladys. So I will just go through what I have in the minutes that I keep during our meeting. So it will be more uh, or less more practical. So uh, the first thing is, do not, if you want to know anything about PASE, go to the website. We have now a very good updated active members list. All right. That's the newest thing that I noticed that is very updated. Isn't that, isn't that right, uh, Mario? Because yes. I just went through that. Now, uh, we are working on having everything in the archives, like history, constitution, uh, what else? Uh, those two things, uh, also, I would like everybody to see that firsthand, just in case we have uh, some kind of uh, amendment and so forth. I don't know if it's there already, but hopefully uh, Richmond Pancho, who is working very hard on the website, is uh, updated the archives, all right? Now, 
everybody have has everybody has heard about the Facebook page. Uh, we have uh, two of them. One is the one that is Pase the Filipino Scientist. Now there is more a private one which is called Pase Lounge. Are they allowed to to do that, Mario? You can ask Mario regarding that. Yeah, the Pase Lounge. That's another one. Yes. Yeah. I think you you have to be a member for that one. Now, now the I highly recommend, by the way, to join the list serve. Uh, Lisa will be sending you email, and she must have sent you emails already because we provided their emails, your emails, asking you if you want to be in the list serve, and you will be getting all the emails that's addressed to this address, passe at googlegroups.com. And also, the way to know more about PASE is through the emails. And also, the, the reason why uh, the email is very important is that is where uh, the weekly updates from President Mario and the incoming president will be. He, he started the tradition, and I like it. It's a summary of everything that has gone, uh, that, uh, has gone during the, has, that had happened during the week. And also there are reminder, reminders from our administrative uh, officer. We just hired Peb, Peb Claris, she's excellent, uh, who makes announcements for meeting webinars, fireside chats, uh, including the Zoom, et cetera. By the way, Feb was a, uh, was a former member of the staff of Lenny, Lebr what's her name? Lenny Lubredo. Yeah, and I mean she's she's uh she's very capable, very good. And also this is where the elections of new members and BOD officers will be sent in the emails through the uh listserv. And also this is where the call for nominations for membership as well as BOD officers will be done. And of course, uh, this will be where the the Rex announcements will be. Now, the activities of PASE, uh, the two ladies um, went through this very, very well. One is the Rex, and there are 15 of them. Now, the other thing that somebody mentioned is being a member of the committees. And, um, there are two people here, uh, members of the committee who are very new, and I would mention Angeline and also Lee, Rosalie Hall, you know? And and that, uh, I mean, they, they are very, they're new members and they already joined the membership committee. Is that right, Mario? I think they're new, right? And also, there's also a recognition committee uh, the, for recognition, uh, 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 service as well as achievement. And then there's the co-award committee, which is a little bit uh, dependent on certain um, criteria, like those who have had the awards, et cetera. Now, as a, uh, one of the things that you can do is be a presenter or attend the APAMS. Just be there is very, very helpful. And also be an organizer. At the Appams, I mean, just just uh, volunteer, uh, and then of course, a uh, Cyang J. Now, you can contribute, but what they're lacking right now are reviewers. So if you think you you have um, a lot of background on certain uh, fields, uh, volunteer to be a reviewer because right now they're short of reviewers. If I'm not mistaken, that's what. Uh, the lament of one of the Gobet, I mean, Giselle had mentioned. Now, uh, the other thing is the elections. Do vote, you know, please vote. And the highest that we have had is the, the latest one, but then I nag, to the, I nag the members to death, you know, and then also nominate. And also, by the way, run for office. Please do that because I have to beg a lot of people to, to to run, you know, for office sometimes. So please don't be shy. They will get to know you, you know what, and and so forth. 
And then of course, one of the activities is paying your dues because we really need it because we have a lot of, as you will see later, we have a lot of uh, activity projects. Now in the next one, this is um, in this particular link, there's a list of projects and you can find it under a support passive. The list of projects we have, we have 11. Now, one of the projects that we have had is uh, the one that was headed by Alvin. It, and this is something to do with uh, getting uh, something to enhance the STEM R&D training and outreach, et cetera. And this is the one that was, this is our first one to be funded by Leslie Diaz. And, and so this is something for you to think about those who are very active in teaching. You can, um, we're still continuing this Mario, right? Uh, this particular initiative and to uh, submit your, uh, we, there will be announcement soliciting uh, for this type of projects. Now, we also did STEM B in our present um, undersecretary of interior, I don't know how you call that, you know, uh, CP David uh, headed this. And the reason why- Environment, okay. The reason why this was so successful is because it was heavily funded by private companies, big companies. And I tell you, I think uh, Al will be better, better to tell who those sponsors are. There was a weekly, STEM B, monthly, and then the finals. And, um, and then this um, includes students from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And then also this is supported by DepEd. And also what we want to do also is because uh, CP is very enterprising. He was getting um, data that we could use and so forth regarding the background of the students, et cetera. It's, it's a wonderful project. And the good news is it has been renewed for the second round. Yeah, and so forth. Now, I included the agri-aqua projects. There were attempts to write projects, and one of them was uh, on fertilizer. Uh, the other one was something related to the rice project. Um, this is, of course, uh, Department of Agriculture, but there was one that was funded. I think that was the Moringa project by Gladys. So something for you to think about and so forth. Now, there's also, uh, there were many uh, position papers that were presented. One of them was written by uh, something to do with um, manpower, right, uh, was one. And there was one, I don't know if this flew already, wherein we wanted to, uh, to have R1 types of universities and so forth. I mean, you can, you can attend it, give your opinions, or you can even help with the papers and so forth. Now, here's uh, another project. The Empower project is a little bit big. It's uh, a pattern after the Howard Hughes uh, initiative that has been sex successfully started in the University of Maryland and then spread all over the United States. This is done in the United States uh, to help those people who are um, marginalized and the minorities and so forth. This is to promote students to go to graduate school. Now the Empower is uh, being done at uh, uh, UPLB right now. And uh, PASE had funded it for about 5,000, 5, oh, is it 2,500? Oh, just $2,000 were cheap. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> we need more money. Okay. And, in, and then, and then I, I think somebody mentioned this already, either Marge or um, the next gen researchers in Pantanal 2050. This is a Philippine science technology innovation. And the one who is very active with this is uh, Alvin Colaba. And uh, the next gen. And I think this is, uh, is this a rec now? I'm not sure, is this a, he wanted some kind of rec uh, or a rec uh, uh, 
group uh, addressing this. Now, the other thing is, this is based on the reports I get from the BOD meeting. Uh, for example, TIP, uh, Technological Institute of the Philippines, uh, they invited uh, Juice Santos to lecture. This is even during the COVID um, uh, time and also Edsel and they had uh, responded. And now uh, EVSU, Eastern Visayas State University. This is again, Albin's baby. Uh, they had a fifth ICT national meeting with six posse members who were plenary speakers. And the posse members even came from the United States. And there's, there's EduConnect. And in, in, the, in one report, this was uh, given by Giselle, the Taiwan University is offering 30 scholarship at this university for MS and PhD. And, and 10 will be going to EVSU and the other 20 to other students from other parts of the Philippines. Now, BPSU, um, the president of which is from Kilio, is moving along with regards to uh, the MOU is, uh, MOA is moving along as far as I know. And then the Rizal, Dep Ed, and schools, Mario reported that the part of, of the initiative is training family members, and it was done by Sherry Monterola. And then I put in here the Unilab, and the last few meetings back, Giselle mentioned that the MicroMasters course with Unilab will be resumed with the first MicroMaster course slated upon approval of Ochave. I hope I have the, the spelling. Now, we have uh, a successful MOA with DOSE, Department of Science and Technology. And this was uh, depending on raising 1 million pesos uh, to create the so-called Philippine Foundation. They need that so that we could qualify for grants. And um, when this happened, then we started having, uh, scheduling bi-monthly meetings, which started uh, November, 2022. And believe me, this is very productive because um, the agenda is, um, it's mutual. You know, it's a mute, it's a cooperative endeavor. It's a wonderful meeting really. And it was held by Zoom and then it was held in the Philippines lately. Now, Taiwanese universities, EXAC, uh, PASUK, this is the uh, at PASE. They had a meeting where in, there was a STEM matching fellowship made matching of members of the Taiwan institutions and the Philippines. And this occurred during that meeting in uh, TUP, the you know, Technological University of the Philippines. And also during the dinner that night. Now two groups uh, are, were, uh, one group already left for Taiwan in, uh, Gladys already left, I think, with a group with Giselle. And then another group will be led by Mario. And I think Eno is going, right, in May. Now, 10 members from the SOOCs, I believe, uh, is slated to comprise each visit. Now, Stride has done a lot for the Philippines. I think, if I'll, I'm not mistaken, they have been renewed again, you know? And also one of the greatest things that, um, that was done by Stride is to prepare the procurement survey report because this is the, work, uh, the, the thing that delays progress in the research is procurement of materials. Now, Central Mindanao University under the leadership of Anne Bilia Lobos who's here is uh, I think the MOU is being prepared or uh, no, it, it's, it's, already, already, it's already completed and the project is ongoing. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's okay. Already in its second year. It's already in its second year, the MOU. Yeah, this coming this coming June. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I okay. So that's that's late. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now now where do the money go? Okay, this is something that I really commend uh, Mario for being being very, very big hearted. You know, he has contacts with undergrads and grad students. And I couldn't believe 
you know, he, his heart is in, in really in developing graduate students. So we have uh, waivers for registration for grad math members. And he was able to contact, I don't know how he was able to contact them, but he did. And then he also uh, granted, uh, we, the BOD approved this, waivers to members of the AFSA, which consists of young scientists in the United States. They got waivers for attending meetings, 10 of them. And then, and, and this is how generous some people are. I don't know where USC got the money. They had allotment of 100 waivers for undergrads and grad fellows in the APAMS 2020 that was held in the Philippines. Uh, they're very generous. Now, the community, um, our very social um, president is so approachable. <laughs> In, in Washington, D.C., he got an invitation to attend a meeting on September 27, 2022, from the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C., to help in organizing the 125th Philippine Independence Celebration in June 2023. And also, he already had organized speakers for that, Coelho, Seville, and uh, Comiso. Okay? Am I right? Yeah. And then the White House is also interested, or was also interested in including a Filipino scientist during the Philippine History Month in October last year. And a similar invitation was extended last year to PASE. And lastly, I'm gonna mention this, this is the baby of Senia. PASE is affiliated now with the National Institute of Health, FAN. This is, um, the a group of American Hawaiian uh, Federation of Asian of, American Native Asian. Hawaiian Pacific Islanders Network. Okay. Yay! <laughs> okay, thank you. I know she will come up with us. <laughs> because I, I I don't know if you know this. Mario just gave this to me uh, to talk about this this morning. Okay, <laughs> so I have so I didn't even comb my hair. Okay, and lastly. Congratulations to everybody. You know what, guys? Be active. Are you still here, the members? You know what? This is just like membership in the church. This is, I'm, I'm active there. The thing is, the problem now is they don't feel like they belong. Hello? You will not only belong if you're active, but also feel you belong. Because you know what? We love you and you love us, right? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Mari, I'm done. Maraming salamat, Lulu. Uh, that was uh, really uh, ex ex exhaustive and expensive. You know, some of the things that I'll be talking about you already. Uh, uh, oh, did I? And so, yeah, no, no, but uh, uh, I will not be redundant. So uh, during my report, it will be more succinct and uh, I'll just uh, 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 focus on what has not yet been said and uh, the future of- uh, The future, uh, yeah, we have a lot right. of plans. Thank you very much. So right now, uh, I'd like to call on uh, Lisa Virata, Dr. Virata, our uh, treasurer for the treasurer's report. Okay, uh, can I share screen? Yes, Paul. Yes. Okay. Okay, can you see this? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, um, yes. This is my usual slides. Um, yeah, just to give you an idea, this I'm just presenting um, our financials here in the U.S. We have a U.S. dollar account in Maryland, and we uh, for the Philippines, uh, we are we are using the Metro Bank account of Paase Foundation Philippines. Um, so just to give you an idea, more or less, that we have money <laughs> and 
uh, through the efforts of Feb, uh, she's been going around approaching the members, asking them to pay, to remind them to pay their annual dues. That's uh, one of your, <laughs> the things that you have to do as a member is to remember to pay your annual dues. So, um, but if you want to, you know, if, if you don't want to be bothered by annual dues, you can always opt to pay the one-time lifetime membership fee, right? So uh, depending on where you are based, if you're in the U.S., then you send it to me and then you can do it through the PayPal button on our website, you know, or you can send, you can mail a check to my address. Um, okay, so this just gives you the, uh, like a current snapshot of what we have uh, as of today, April, it's April 27 here, okay. So we get income from annual juice and lifetime memberships. Uh, we also get donations, uh, you know, for different causes. Um, and uh, we've also partnered with Philippine Science Foundation, you know, to help them with their, whenever they have fundraising, uh, we make, you know, we partner with them so we can receive dollar donations for them. Um, we've also partnered with Pisayan. It's also a, a Philippine Science Alumni um, a network. Okay, so we we help receive donations for them, and we send it to the Philippines. Um, some people have already registered for the APAMS 2023. That's gonna be held in Orlando uh, this June. So uh, so far, I've received six. Uh, payments already. I mean, uh, payments for six people, and of course we get a little income from the the dividends from the bank, and for, uh, we've had a very small income from Amazon Smile, you know. But that's going away, so we won't be getting uh, our our little donation from them anymore. Um, so incomes so far. Uh, we've had twenty about twenty five thousand dollars in terms of expenses, and you see the the list is longer because we are using our money for things, you know. Uh, so we pay yes. fees like for Zoom, for and PayPal. Of course, gets a little cut when people are donating through them, you know, because if you pay by credit card or or what, you know, then there's a little portion that's taken out, but. We've tried to minimize the fees as much as possible because we're a nonprofit organization. So I put all the fees together up there. Um, and of course, you can see that the donations are being sent you know, to our partners like Philippine Science Foundation. We sent them their donations. Uh, we also have supported the UPLB Empower uh, project. So we had our... We, you know, we sent them two thousand dollars. That was a grant from Pase, and also sent donations to Pisayan. That's the Philippine Science uh, Alumni Network. Um, and Lulu also donated. Um, so far, we've sent one hundred dollars of her three hundred dollar donation. Um, this was for intended for the CNJ uh, journal and the Empower. Um, uh, program. Okay. And uh, as mentioned, uh, we are also passing here in the U.S., in the D.C. area. We are also part of that uh, 125th Philippine Independence Day celebration here in D.C. So we had to give our share since we're supporting that event. So we gave uh, them $500. Uh, and there are, and there are many film organizations involved lang paase so we just wanted to give our share um and Anne Villa Lobos a uh, very generous donor to paase almost every year she gives us um a, a generous donation um we sent her donation of $2000 to Central Mindanao University for this uh, 
project that just started. It's a biodiversity summer camp for kids. Uh, can I make a correction on that, Lisa? Okay. Uh, the summer camp will be shouldered by myself for this year. Are you? Okay, but, but uh, it's going to be held at CMU. Yeah, but the 2000 that you sent is for the project that's ongoing. That's the okay. one with the MOU. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll just make a corrections uh, report. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and um, we also sent some money for Cy and J uh, expenses um, through the Paase Foundation Philippines. So there have been, you know, some submissions of articles, and of course, the, it incurred. There's some expenses incurred, and we're also paying uh, some. I don't know. I, I don't have the lot, the list, but they sh um, Irene Villasenor, who's the treasurer for Pase Philippines, uh, she's the one who's, who sends me the list of expenses. So we try to offset their expenses too. And there was a business lunch also with the UPLB vice chancellor and the Office of uh, Student Affairs, I think, um, with regards to the Empower program that was held earlier this year, we, we shouldered that. And this cross-ref annual fee, this is actually tied up with Cy and J. So they're the one hosting the journal online. And this is an annual uh, membership fee that we pay. And there's an there's a Paasi anniversary lunch that's coming up, and we I, we advance the payment for the food. And, and these are we have a lot of uh, Paasi members here in the DC area. Uh, we're we're gonna see each other this Saturday uh, to celebrate Paasi's anniversary. So that's the total expenses fourteen about fourteen thousand. Okay, and just to give you the what we have in our bank accounts. Uh, okay, we have about sixty three nine hundred sixty three thousand nine hundred currently, and just to give you a summary, uh, what we earned so far this year minus what we've spent, you know, we still uh, came up in the black. So we had about we have about. 10,891. Okay, that's it. Sorry, I took so long. It's okay, Lisa. Lisa, I would like to just add and acknowledge the donation of the Po uh, sisters. Yes. Uh, in uh, honor of a... uh, yeah, Mrs. Uh, uh, Paso. Paso yeah, of $15,000. Yeah, that was actually a big uh, donation this year, and we're very thankful and uh, to the generosity of the co sisters. Marami salamat, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. So, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Irene Villasenor, who's the uh, treasurer for the Pase uh, uh, Foundation Philippines Incorporated, uh, could not make it uh, today. And so uh, we'll probably uh, uh, send uh, a, uh, a report, financial report from her and uh, uh, make it available for our membership you know, in uh, the uh, coming days. So for now, let's uh, continue. Uh, we'll be sharing my screen for uh, the uh, president's report. So uh, please bear with me. Let me just open my slide and uh, I'll share my screen. So magandang uh, <laughs> Uh, many of uh, what I have on my slides uh, on my president's report are uh, pictorial representations of what uh, Lulu, uh, 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 some of what she already mentioned. 
and uh, what uh, were covered during the uh, Papa Asia 101, and also uh, uh, Vice President uh, Gladys's uh, closing remarks uh, during the oath taking and Papa Asia 101. But I'll be uh, 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 non redundant. I will not repeat what's already been said, but I'll just emphasize what I think would be important for our uh, uh, members, new and uh, uh, seasoned alike. So uh, we've already talked about, you know, about us, uh, its uh, uh, main goals. Uh, but then I'd like to uh, first thank the uh, uh, indefatigable members of the uh, board of directors, starting from uh, Gladys uh, Completo, our VP and President-elect, uh, Secretary Lulu Herald, uh, uh, Treasurer uh, Lisa Virata, and our uh, uh, members of the uh, board of uh, directors, Chair uh, Pino Lansigan, uh, Tina Binag, March Peña, Lisa Virata, Al Serafica, Gobeda Pincula, Joe Cruz, CP David, Senya Tigno, and our ex officio uh, Giselle uh, Concepcion. They've been working hard on uh, a lot of uh, activities and uh, uh, policy work related to uh, Baase. And so I'm really very uh, grateful uh, to them. Uh, I presented it this during the uh, year-end event uh, uh, in 2022, but uh, of course we have uh, a number of uh, new uh, uh, members. And so I'd like to just emphasize that for uh, uh, last year and this year, uh, these are the major trusts of uh, my leadership. First is organizational and membership development, including the uh, 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 advancement and the uh, further uh, development of the research expertise cluster uh, by uh, 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 forming the uh, REC Council, headed by uh, March Pena and uh, uh, Gladys Completo. We also continue our recognition of uh, service and engagement of our members. The second thrust uh, is education, professional development, and research dissemination. We have uh, several uh, uh, webinars and fireside chats last year, and this year is continuing. Of course, uh, Lulu already mentioned uh, the STEMB, SIANG jail. Of course, we have our APAMs. We continue networking and uh, building a community within and outside of PAASE uh, with the different organizations. Uh, institutions and agencies. We collaborate with STEM-oriented organizations. We do this uh, through uh, uh, MOU signing and through uh, uh, pursuing, you know, uh, different uh, collaborative uh, partnerships, uh, uh, even outside of these structures of, of MOUs. And then we have, of course, the social and policy advocacy. Uh, we had last year the pro-science activism. We participate in national events in Philippines and the U.S., and we uh, currently are doing uh, uh, some uh, uh, policy advocacy with the OST. Uh, this is uh, my uh, 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 listing, you know, of the membership of PASE through the years. And if you add uh, the number of full members with associate members, it's actually totaling 707 already. So, uh, but I know we, we need to uh, perhaps uh, uh, check with the membership committee too, because this is a product of uh, a painstaking <laughs> data organization by our uh, student assistants. And so uh, we we try to look into uh, 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 previous year's uh, acceptance, nomination and acceptance to pass and then remove those associate members who became already full members uh, and those who have uh, uh, who were already deceased. You know, we, we try to clean our uh, membership uh, roster. These are the uh, RX. Uh, uh, this have already been covered, but right now we have like some new directions in clustering, and this uh, has been uh, proposed by uh, uh, academician Alvin Kulaba to be consistent with Pagnanao 2025, and it's being pursued by the Rec Council. Uh, so uh, right now we are uh, actually planning to uh, uh, to convene, you know, uh, several Recs into particular particular uh, thematic uh, uh, clusters like food, nutrition, and health, environment, and space exploration, energy and water, built environment, 
human capital development and society and community. Uh, these are uh, just some of the details of our awards and recognition. So last year, we uh, awarded a co-awards for science to Dr. Rosalia Seaman of University of Arkansas and for engineering to Dr. Elmer Dadios of De La Salle University. We also uh, awarded a service uh, a recognition to Dr. Giselle Concepcion and the uh, engagement awards to Dr. Alvin Culaba, Dr. Joel Coelho, Dr. Gladys Completo, Dr. Julius Leanio, and Dr. Angeline Lau. Uh, just a, uh, a review of what we had uh, uh, last year and this year in terms of webinars and fireside chats. Uh, so far, from January 2022 to April 2023, we've had 35 webinars and 10 fireside chats. And these are just you know, uh, examples of those uh, uh, topics uh, covered uh, 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 of, the, uh, of the webinars uh, only for this uh, year, actually. So I already removed you know, all those uh, slides from last year. So, uh, and for uh, this year too, uh, we've had two fireside chats on global women's uh, breaking barriers in science and the President's Summit. I'd really like to thank uh, uh, these uh, individuals, uh, members of PAASE, who have been really very helpful in uh, organizing their, uh, uh, these uh, webinars and fireside chats. Uh, especially uh, Gladys Completo, Kea Viso, Angelao, Marla Redillas, Noli Veracruz, Marahel, Maria Helen Dayo, Billy Cabellon, Eileen Navarro Almario, Robert Advincula, Alvin Culaba, Giselle Concepcion, Edna Co, March Peña, and Rowena Aguilla. Maraming salamat po. Uh, uh, we have this webinar uh, on uh, May 15. So we had some technical glitch uh, uh, last uh, 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 weekend, you know, Sunday, and so we didn't uh, uh, push through with this uh, webinar, but please attend this on May 15. Uh, so still under the education, professional development and research dissemination, uh, uh, Ludo already mentioned Empower, I ran a workshop at UPLB on uh, strengths-based, uh, cohort-based uh, scholars uh, programming, uh, and uh, this was done in February. Uh, this is the uh, just uh, the national STEM B uh, slide, and uh, again, I'd like to emphasize the importance of this uh, particular uh, project of Paase uh, Our Sci NJ. Uh, it's now Scopus Index, and it's considered an international publication by the UP system. I'd like again to thank uh, Dr. Andrea Lobos for her generous support of this uh, uh, project. These are uh, just the numbers from APOMS uh, last year. You can see uh, the uh, uh, number of uh, lectures and sessions and speakers, papers and posters, which we would like to uh, uh, duplicate you know, this uh, uh, year for APOMS 2023, which will be held uh, in Orlando, Florida. At the same time, we have actually an online first online component for uh, three sessions and then the face-to-face -face in Orlando, Florida. Our theme is reimagining the training of 21st century STEAM workforce. And this is uh, co-chaired by myself and Dr. Senya Tigno. These are our uh, keynote plenary speakers, Dr. Sins Bautista, a former vice president for academic affairs of UP system, Dr. Rosemary Adilion, under secretary of NEDA, uh, Dr. Ramon uh, Arcadio, former chancellor of UP Manila, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Henry Howard, a special ambassador of the Philippines to Florida. Mr. Eric Sand is an expert in video gaming as a tool for learning. Dr. Kirsoro Kilio is the president of the Batanga State University. And Ms. Josephine Santiago Bond, who is an alumna of UP Diliman, is uh, currently uh, the head of an, the, an engi the engineering department of NASA Kennedy Center. Uh, uh, our fourth uh, thrust, networking community building. We've done this uh, STEAM matching activity in February at the Technological University of the Philippines, attended by about 40 uh, uh, Taiwanese uh, scientists and academics. And then uh, the uh, delegation from the Philippines visited uh, Kaohsiung, Taiwan, April 10th, 14th. 
Uh, our next visit will be on May 7 to 12. I'll be leading this uh, team uh, along with uh, uh, the leaders of two universities, uh, University of Rizal System and the uh, Eastern Visayas State University. And Dr. Ino Lansigan and Dr. Uh, Giselle Concepcion will be with us. The team of uh, Gladys uh, uh, this month, uh, April 10 to 14, uh, she led it and uh, uh, there were uh, leaders from Bataan Peninsula State University and the uh, uh, Central Mindanao University. So kasama po doon si Dr. Ann Villalobos, si Dr. Jomar Rabahante, si Dr. Coco Edison, Dr. Uh, uh, Ronilo Flores, and other uh, uh, members. Uh, oh, Dr. Giselle Concepcion was also uh, there. Uh, so uh, they visited four uh, Taiwanese uh, universities in Kaohsiung. Uh, this is a very important uh, project that uh, we launched, our support of uh, the grad map uh, uh, program. Uh, so, uh, of course, in addition to grad map, we are uh, uh, we connected with the uh, American uh, uh, the Association of Filipino American uh, Scientists in America. But then the, the funding uh, uh, that uh, uh, Lulu was talking about earlier was for grad map. Uh, we uh, uh, donated uh, some uh, amount, about $5,000, to support 17 uh, applicants uh, to graduate schools. And uh, they received up to $300 per student. Uh, they uh, actually submitted uh, a report to us. It's not complete yet because by this, this time, uh, they haven't heard from uh, uh, some students. But uh, they were happy to report that uh, for majority of the award is 75%. Uh, uh, the uh, amount uh, that uh, we donated was able to cover expenses for at least three programs you know, for each uh, student. 67% uh, or eight of 12 respond respondents also used the grant to cover exam-related expenses. And these were the types of programs that the students applied for. Uh, most of them applied for a master's, and then uh, those programs are located, uh, you know, across the globe. Uh, it uh, was reported to us that uh, five out of the 12 respondents received at least one admission offer already, uh, but many applicants are still uh, pending results. So, uh, some of uh, uh, their uh, interviews, uh, the, they uh, got this uh, feedback. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, some of them got accepted already, uh, but some postponed because they really had some financial issues. Uh, about a third of them said that without the grant, uh, they would not have been able to apply to certain programs, if any at all. So it's really important, I believe, to continue this uh, program of supporting our uh, 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 students who are applying to uh, STEM graduate programs. Uh, it has been helpful for them. And we uh, believe that uh, continuing this would uh, be uh, a tremendous uh, you know, support uh, for uh, students who otherwise wouldn't be able to uh, apply and consider uh, advanced studies in, in STEM. So uh, uh, after this, ito po, ito yung uh, uh, mga organization na meron tayong MOUs. I'll not uh, belabor this, but it's this is still continuing. And then in terms of our uh, uh, Social engagement and policy advocacy. Uh, if you remember those who were uh, uh, here last uh, year, we did a pro-science activism, where out of which we develop our 10-point agenda. And these are uh, uh, the, uh, the themes that we uh, uh, created out of those uh, discussions. And we've been very systematic in terms of pursuing some, because we couldn't uh, do a uh, everything at the same time, uh, but uh, this may be for, uh, you know, future publication, we're still developing our uh, uh, write-up for, for this. Uh, this, uh, of course, include uh, the human capital development, 
uh, internationalization and globalization and promotion of STI in the regions, three of our priorities. So uh, we also uh, connected this 10-point agenda to Pactanal 2050. You know, uh, Ludo mentioned earlier our uh, um, meeting uh, with DOSD. The last meeting uh, we had was a face-to-face -face at uh, the DOSD office in Agij. And you can see here, uh, I attended it with uh, Gladys, uh, Giselle, uh, Al and Alvin, and we, uh, we have here uh, uh, Dr. René Solidum, the uh, Secretary of the OST. There was also a presentation by uh, Michael Puruganan of uh, their proposal on genomic, uh, rice genomic uh, research. And we also uh, was uh, trying to actually um, uh, sell, you know, uh, the possibility of the OST supporting, of course, uh, the uh, National STEMB, the SIENG, the Empower program, and of course, uh, continuing support for the STI in the region uh, initiatives such as the iStart and iSteam. Uh, and finally, I guess I have this slide. This is about our participation in the 125th Philippine Independence Day celebration. So we have uh, Seville, Tetera Wadley, uh, Joey Comiso, and uh, Joel Coelho who will be presenting uh, their work in non-technical uh, you know, language to the public. Uh, we would like to emphasize during uh, a one-hour session the achievements of Filipino uh, scientists and uh, their role models, and uh, of course the importance of supporting the future generation of scientists and engineers in the US and in the Philippines and elsewhere. So, and finally, uh, this is about the future actually. And, uh, you know, uh, on um, Sunday here, Monday there morning, uh, we had the president's summit and there were a lot of ideas that came from the former presidents. And I thought that I would uh, distill those ideas and try to think of uh, uh, moving forward with some of, of those ideas. And that includes uh, uh, conducting, uh, launching workshops and write shops on STEM publishing and grant writing. Uh, we already had this with uh, Dr. Robert Advincula uh, last night uh, or yesterday. And so we want to have sequel to that, uh, very, very important. We had like a tremendous amount of interest from students and from faculty from many different universities uh, who attended that workshop. Another one that this, this is our Waterloo is the engagement. We have, really, we have like increasing in, uh, rate of engagement, but it's still one thing. We want, especially our young members to be engaged. And so we're thinking, of ways to uh, uh, increase the uh, participation of our membership in the activities that we have, not only the webinars and the uh, fireside chats, but of course also APAM spend, but also becoming active in our uh, committees. You know, uh, it's uh, very important that uh, there are many hands, that are many uh, eyes and ears, there are many warm bodies who are, uh, are doing work, uh, even a small slice of the work of Paase, because they can make a difference. Uh, during the president's uh, uh, meeting, uh, uh, a number of presidents also mentioned the uh, potential impact of, of Paase. We haven't really quantified the, the impact of uh, Paase. We uh, probably have to uh, do some study study uh, uh, groups. We have to uh, uh, build a concept to how to uh, 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 understand how Paase has been impacted, in, impacting, you know, uh, science and, and technology in the Philippines. You know, we have uh, a number of uh, Paase scientists who have trained so many graduate students, who have published with many uh, graduate students and, and, and faculty in the Philippines. And so uh, somehow we need to uh, be able to show uh, the data, uh, collect data and show data and, and so that we have a way of gauging how uh, PAAS as an organization has impacted, you know, our uh, uh, as, uh, science and technology innovation ecosystem in the country. And finally, the PAAS President's Project uh, 1%, this is actually a brainchild of uh, Dr. Al Serafika. I told him that we can uh, do this after APAMS, but this is about uh, 
uh, pursuing and advocating for uh, the one uh, percent uh, of the uh, uh, Philippines uh, GP GDP, you know, as our budget for science and and technology. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, Al uh, and uh, Mama Esther, but uh, this is uh, something that uh, uh, probably, you know, we'll really look uh, into seriously and launch uh, in uh, like a, a few months. Actually, it was uh, Alvin who initially uh, initiated oh, okay. one percent of GDP. I just followed mm -hmm. up on that one, uh, uh, Mario. But uh, uh, essentially, it's how do we benchmark current R and D's. And innovation spending in the Philippines approaching one percent, hopefully by the time Paase turns fifty, that's seven years from now. So if you ask me right now, I look at the OST putting in about twenty billion, uh, all in all in, in uh, human capital development facilities and grants. Chad has probably another ten billion on on human capital development. But if 1%, as uh, I think Giselle did the calculation and Alvin, uh, that would amount to about 220 billion pesos all spent on STI. Uh, we need to get there. And it's not going to be an easy road. You're probably starting from less than 30 billion. Uh, all in all, we need to get the input from the private sector as well and other multilateral I know from USAID Stride, we had $38 million. It's about $1.5 billion. And if the next Stride 3 comes in at $30 million, that would put it at close to $2 billion. So, so again, this is a big project. And I wanted the new members to be aware that uh, there's an initiative that we're talking about. But a lot of the project's uh, uh, success would rely on us knowing what's happening in our specific research expertise clusters, as well as what are the problems that we can solve that's part of the Philippine uh, uh, um, development program needs. So we need to do a needs assessment uh, in order to be able to match whatever we propose as solutions or initiatives moving forward. Because so we have to match both the user needs as well as our proposal being research generating part of the population or the community. That's a big project, guys. I just want you guys to get excited about it. There's an initiative. We will pair it up with the National Academy of Science, uh, Pantanao 2050, which is now currently being connected with the Philippine Development Plan of six years for the BBM administration. And I'm also part of NAST, and I'm involved with three special initiatives from the NAS side on basic industries, health applications, and rural development. So we will all tie this in on what PAASE can do in order to be able to bridge the gap. And I think us being 600 strong now, I think we can truly make an impact. Not today, but maybe seven years from now. And that's a good time also to start our impact study today <laughs> in order to build on what our impact. Ma Mario, Mario. Mario. Uh, Hello, Mario. Oh, um, yes. I will start. I will stop uh, sharing, Muna, no? so we can see everyone. Sekerni. Yes, uh, uh, Mario. Sekerni, pa. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mario. Uh, yes. We really have been lagging behind uh, in terms of, uh, you know, spending on uh, S and uh, uh, We have been uh, we have been stuck at uh, around six. 0.616% for a long time. I think it's about 1.25% uh, now or 1.3. And uh, no, no, it's an, rather 0 0.3 rather. We, we, we have been stuck at uh, 0 0.16. Now it's about maybe about uh, 0 0.3. 0 0.3. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, what, uh, bringing it to 1% of GDP is really going to be a... Uh, uh, an upside, uh, you know, uh, quite a climb for mm -hmm. for the uh, for this uh, for this uh, you know uh, amount. And uh, the one one important one thing that can uh, probably contribute to bringing uh, 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 S and spending to one percent of GDP is uh, linking uh, academe 
including including passe with industry and uh, that is what i am uh, be, i've been asked by the new president of up to try to work on uh, linking uh, academ with the industry so that uh, there's going to be a symbiotic relationship between education and uh, snt on the one hand and uh, industry uh, the application of snt to industry and the, uh, and vice versa so th that is uh, what uh, we should also uh, aim for the uh, connect the nexus between uh, industry and uh, academe academe that includes uh, paase of course thank you thank you secretary i remember uh, during the pro science activism last year that you were actually talking about this already right and then alvin talked about this uh, during the president summit and, and thank you for following up uh, al so uh, this is a critical uh, uh, issue is there any other comment related to that before we move on Okay, salamat po. So the next part of our business meeting is actually some consultation on the uh, proposal, uh, set of uh, proposals for, for membership uh, related to uh, uh, payment of dues. So I, I just want to share my uh, uh, screen again. Uh, so uh, I, I shared this uh, earlier. Ito pong, uh, just one page of uh, policy recommendations for PASI membership, uh, which uh, uh, revolves around our need, of course, for uh, uh, a uh, continu con continuing revenue uh, stream, you know, and, and part of it is from our uh, uh, membership fees. So uh, these policy recommendations aim to maintain active engagement with PASI members while ensuring its financial stability and promoting a sense of accountability and commitment within the organization. So ito po yung at ang proposal ngayon na, uh, na discuss na twice uh, ng uh, BOD, pero uh, I'm uh, presenting it here for uh, consultation purposes. So number one is membership interruption due to non-payment of dues. If a member fails to pay their annual dues for three consecutive years beginning in 2023, their membership status will be changed to inactive. Inactive members will not have the privileges of active members, nomination and election of new members, voting in referenda, membership in committees, discount for APAMS participation and sign J publication, use of PAAS, a Google uh, groups list serve. As you can see, beginning to 2023, for three consecutive years. So we are really kind. We, we would like to give our, uh, our members the chance to uh, uh, pay up. Membership activation, official membership of a newly elected member shall commence once the new member has paid their dues. Starting in 2023, members will not be required to pay any unpaid dues from previous years except when reactivating membership, which will require payment of dues for the previous year as a penalty and the current year or lifetime membership if they so desire. PASE will publish a list of active and inactive members. Members who have not paid their dues for three consecutive years from 2023 will be removed from the active roster and will be listed under the inactive members list. Newly inducted members must pay their dues within two months of induction. A promissory note will be sent to all unpaid members, taking the deadline of payment of dues. And payment of dues after August will be credited for the following calendar year. We're just following the constitution here or the bylaws. Event registration members shall be required to pay their dues when registering for PASI meetings or conferences. Communication with non-paying members. At the beginning of every year, the membership committee chair and treasurer shall send a letter to non-paying members, informing them of their inactive status and the consequences of non and payment. The letter should also indicate that a list of active and inactive members will be published. PASA shall improve the process of tracking dues payments to ensure that accurate records are maintained for each member. The number of paid members shall be reported by the treasurer during the annual business meeting. And then just like a last item here, associate membership dues. The BOD requests the membership committee to review the associate membership dues policy and verify whether associate members are required to pay dues. If not, Consider implementing a lower fee for them subject to approval of the PASE BOD. Uh, 
Do we have any uh, comments or uh, uh, feedback? Uh, Mario? Mario? Uh, 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 yes, Gladys. Um, can you just remind us about the um, policy on the associate membership? So based on this, um, it's just the full members that are required to pay the annual dues. Is that correct? Yes, yes. The, the associate members are not required according to our uh, bylaws. Uh, but then uh, we have been uh, discussing amongst ourselves at the board uh, initially that perhaps we can uh, uh, consider implementing a lower fee for them subject to approval of the of board of the passive uh, BOT and of course upon recommendation by the membership committee. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I know some um, new members here, active members of other organizations, maybe um, one of them can share when mm -hmm. the, um, if associate members are being asked to pay for an annual to uh, annual fee. I cannot remember if NRCP actually collects. I know I I paid when um, when I was inducted. Okay, but I'm not sure if we're required to pay yearly as also. Is there somebody who could share? Um, uh, yes, si ano po, si, I'm John. Yes, si Dr. Raimundo. Ma'am Sean, uh, muted po kayo. You're muted. Yes, I think they are, they are required to pay as, uh, social, um, annual. But I have another issue on membership. Can I bring it out? Sure. Po. Yes, sure. I already told Mario earlier about the non-Filipino born members that are sympathetic to Paase. Have you discussed that in your board? Yeah, there's been a discussion uh, on that, I think, a number of times. Uh, there, there's a history. I, I wasn't a member then uh, of like a uh, uh, husband of a, uh, uh, a Filipina a scientist, you know, there. And uh, uh, he uh, he became a member by, by uh, virtue of, you know, uh, affiliation uh, and uh, the board uh, somehow had a, had a consensus that because we had an applicant, you know, who was not a uh, uh, Filip Philippine born, but then has been living in the Philippines for and serving in the Philippines for uh, several years. Uh, and it it was also approved, and so it seems like there is uh, some standards, you know, that we uh, we use, although it's not written. I I I, I haven't uh, you know uh, seen anything that written. Pero yun po. Uh, so far we have uh, two members, uh, with, uh, as far as I know, who uh, are. Uh, uh, non uh, you know uh, not born in the philippines or or uh, uh, are probably not filipino uh, citizens because that's against our constitution <laughs> read your the constitution uh, laws on membership there uh, members should be filipino philippine born really uh, <laughs> Uh, not uh, Philippine descent. Philippine descent. Uh, yeah. Not Philippine. necessarily. I don't Philippine think born, you can yeah. say Philippine born because there are some Filipinos who were born in the United States, but right, right. yeah, are sympathetic to Pase. And probably deserve to be members more than exactly. some Filipinos who don't even serve this country. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> And, right. and and I think we also have a category of members who are honorary, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe those foreigners. Well, so just uh, revise the by the uh, loss of membership. Then that is the the sentiment of the group because that's against our bylaws. Papa, uh, Asiga, we will discuss this uh, uh, with the board. Uh, Again, and uh, probably we have to have a written, you know, uh, decision on this because, uh, as far as I know, we haven't uh, codified, you know, uh, any change uh, that uh, are uh, actually uh, may not totally, you know, 
uh, uh, following uh, uh, the bylaws, but uh, uh, with the consensus of uh, the PASEV, uh, uh, BOD, upon the liberation, uh, uh, the, they or we, you know, currently decided uh, to have some of those uh, nominations accepted because of their ties to the Philippines, you know, uh, by affiliation or by service or by residency. So per, um, perhaps, Mario, we can maybe just the, um, include this in the in our agenda in our next meeting. Yeah, so our, our main meeting. Mm -hmm. We can have it um, written in black and white after we also meet with the uh, MEMCOM. So Definitely. there will be no questions again mm -hmm. next time. But mom, thank you, ma'am, Dr. Raimundo, for that for that question and concern. And we will address that one. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you so much, for, uh, Ma'am Sean. Uh, we'll definitely uh, uh, cover that during the next meeting of the BOD. Okay, thanks. Yes. Uh, po bang other comments about uh, the uh, membership uh, rules that uh, we will uh, soon uh, deliberate uh, on again, Sabiodi, and, and finally approve? Uh, Mario? Um, uh, yes. Uh, secondary. Mario. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you have this policy. Uh, we have this policy of uh, three years. If not non payment for three years, then. Uh, uh, the, the the member would become inactive. inactive. Uh, how about allowing uh, those who have constraints of, of paying annually uh, that they pay uh, you know uh, some portion every every year over three years so that by the third year they would have completed their payment. Is that uh, is that uh, you know uh, feasible or uh, you know? Uh, is, is, is that a, an, an okay idea that uh, we give yeah. them three years to pay in installments every year so that by the third year, the, the payment is completed? Yeah, you're talking, sir, of uh, lifetime membership, right? 4,000, so divided by three, that will be around 1,333. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can uh, definitely uh, consider that. Yes. I'll, uh, we are taking note of uh, all the suggestions here and 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 the feedback. Uh, anything? Any other comments? For yes, ma'am. Um, yes, raise your hand. hand. Yes. yes uh, hi. Good morning. Uh, I was about to say the same thing. I am an officer of the Japan uh, Society for the Promotion of Science Alumni Association of the Philippines. Philippines. And we have uh, two schemes. One is for lifetime membership fee payment, which is just one time, and uh, much lower fee, annual fees. So the annual fees are charged whenever they uh, attend meetings or the annual uh, conferences. So if they cannot pay the one time fee, then they can pay every time they attend uh, the conferences or the meetings. Maybe that scheme would also work for PASIF. That's right. I know in many professional organizations, they require payment of membership fee even before uh, like submitting an abstract or uh, before uh, being uh, accepted as a presenter in a, a, in a conference. About. Thank you so much for that uh, idea. Uh, March? Yes, March. Uh, can I say something? Uh, I think the problem in the Philippines, because this happens to my colleagues in CMU, I end up the one paying for them because it's easier if I pay through uh, Lisa rather than in the Philippines because you have to go to the bank and then process it like that. That's a difficulty in the Philippines. So more likely that is one of their reasons why some cannot pay their dues and they forgot about it and so on. I don't believe this. Yeah, and that's why we actually wrote each and every Every uh, member we, we thought uh, have not paid their dues. And and actually, many of them uh, uh, replied uh, positively. Uh, but of course, uh, it's still, uh, you know, uh, we still want more of our members to actually comply with the uh, uh, dues payment. Thank you. Uh, Maybe that's the thanks, uh, uh, to Marge, to Marge, she raised her hand before Senia, then followed by Senia. 
You're muted, Marge. Mute. Naka-mute. Sorry. Um, I just want to um, re um, recall that a few years ago when Giselle was president and uh, it was harder to pay the membership dues then because we couldn't find where the link was. Uh, but now we've made that easy to find so that you can just click and pay by PayPal, particularly in the United States. But also we also wanted to pay the lifetime membership. We gave them an opportunity to do it in a monthly, uh, in yearly, in, in installments, right? So you can do four installments and just indicate that you wanted to do the lifetime membership and pay in installments and then that was counted. And many people actually availed of that and became lifetime members. They didn't pay the $400 at once, but they just paid it in uh, however many installments they want, at least four installments. Um, and and uh, that allowed a lot of people to uh, repay, uh, pay their membership dues. Thank you, Marge. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, I was I was uh, one of those who availed of that installment scheme. So for a uh, lifetime membership, Sanya, you were raising your hand. Yeah, I was just wondering. So I I too availed of that lifetime membership because that is really a bargain, so to speak. But for our other members who did not avail of that, and some of whom are retired, is there a uh, a notion that maybe we can either exempt them or give them a sort of a senior pass or something like that. Senior discount. Senior discount. Yeah. percent discount. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think you know uh, everything can you know be on the table. Uh, that's uh, we recognize that. Uh, actually, we, we've heard from some of them. Yes. We, will, we are taking note of that. Any other um, I'll comments? Uh, right. I, I, I think having a socialized, I mean, a face-to-face -face basis, President Mario, uh, mm -hmm. to me, the initiative of wanting to be active after being notified of inactivity and non-payment, I think is a good initiative that we, uh, we take on. Uh, from the payment side uh, that Anne mentioned, Definitely, during the pandemic in the Philippines, the uh, GCash uh, capability has become more active in terms of being able to pay. Uh, too bad that Irene de Lesenor is not here. I would have told her to actually uh, easily uh, receive uh, 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 payments through GCash now uh, for, for Paase. And she probably would confirm that we are already doing that. But uh, yes, I mean, to me, any initiative that the member wants to be activated after being warned of being inactive due to non-payment is always a good uh, starting point to uh, come up with an acceptable uh, financial arrangement. And uh, I think uh, some of us are probably a little bit better off and we can look at those applicants in terms of potential, uh, for lack of a better word, granting aid <laughs> uh, to accept the members uh, and, 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 and uh, However, uh, matching payments or, or, or co-sharing in terms of, uh, but I think the initiative is more important to me than the actual amount. So I hope we can consider that moving forward as well. Thank you. Thank you, Al. See, Elmer is raising his hand. Yeah, I'm in favor of that uh, incentive for seniors in American Chemical Society. We only have the annual dues. If you're retired, uh, it's only 50%. Uh, you have to okay. pay for the membership. Thank you, thank you. That's that's really helpful. Uh, any other comments, uh, suggestions, feedback? How much is the uh, uh, lifetime now for uh, Philippines? Local? Four thousand. Four thousand pesos. Four, four thousand. Mm -hmm. Ako kasi basta meron ng lifetime nagbabayad na ako kagad kasi alam ko tataas yan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, oh, mom. Thank you. I probably paid 150 pesos. I'm not sure anymore. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> 20 percent discount for senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you already paid a lifetime membership, you ano na yon. <laughs> wala nang, wala nang uh, no, uh, uh, balik. 
Well, thank, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So that has been really very, a very fruitful discussion. Uh, so we will be considering all of uh, your suggestions and uh, we'll uh, 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 discuss this with the, with the board during our, our next meeting. And hopefully we'll uh, approve, you know, this uh, new uh, membership rules uh, then so that the membership committee can uh, start applying them. So thank you, Paul. The, uh, the next... Uh, I'm Mario, can I say something? Oh, yes, Gladys. About the membership. Oh, yes, so, um, because we you mentioned there that um, we will consider um, the associate members to... We will be, we'll consider asking um, a lower annual dues for the associate members. So is it possible to hear from our new associate member what, uh, what's their comment about this? Especially that Tina shared that NRC, NRCP does not have any membership fees. Oh, for associate members. Uh, is there any remember that NRCP is government funded. That's true, that's mm -hmm. what. Wala naman tayong ibang source of funds kundi yung ating membership fee. So you cannot compare NRCP with, uh, paase with NRCP in that regard. Yes, Kasi gobyernong, gobyernong bayan na lahat ng kanilang swe uh, mga sweldo, mga ganito. Mga ganito. <laughs> Parang hindi yata comparable. Hindi, ang sitwasyon is different. This is like a private organization. And if it's a private organization, no government money, pahirap ang humingi sa gobyerno, then I think, uh, you know, we have to to fund the organization. And those, maybe uh, those who can, who are a little bit better off, can help. Uh, you know, rather than, you know, kasi yung NRCP iba yan. Iba talaga siya. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So uh, if, if we are going to set a payment for a lower payment for uh, uh, associate members, it could be like 50%, uh, uh, you know, of uh, what the full members uh, pay as annual dues. So that's 500 pesos uh, a year. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh so, that is uh, just to let uh, you know, uh, I never mention anything about fees for the associate members. Yeah. I, I only oh. mention about that on the uh, full members, as instructed by Mario. When yes. I email them. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, because they are not required as of now, you know, to, yes, to pay anything. I have a question. We receive some um, uh, lifetime um, membership. Yeah. Um, fees from associate members because they were really excited and they committed to the PAASE um, organization. Maybe you should not accept lifetime. That means if they will be a member. They are not even uh, regular members yet. Just an annual dues. Uh, because eh, baka... Annual dues for yeah. uh, For any <laughs> stupid reason, he doesn't become a full-time member. Paano yun yan? Full-time, I mean, lifetime na siya. So an associate membership should only be annual dues. Annual dues, yeah. And they give their lifetime dues when they become full time full members. Kasi yun ang sigurado na sila that they are they will be there for a lifetime. Pero yung associate, hindi sigurado yan. A ano kung may ginawang kalokohan yan, plagiarism, etc. And we want to kick him off. <laughs> I'm take my lifetime dues. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thank you for your feedback, uh, no, my master. So I guess we will pursue this, right, uh, with the board. So uh, uh, so right now, um, we have like uh, six minutes before 10.30. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, ang susunod na item actually other matters if there's anything else that uh, we want to cover. Uh, uh, for uh, this uh, business meeting. Actually, I have one, uh, which is an advisory uh, regarding the use of the Paase Google Group. I, uh, it's just an advisory, it's not like a policy uh, uh, because of, you know, some uh, like uh, so, some small, you know, demand for clarity about what we can and, you know, uh, should or should not post on uh, uh, our Paase Google Group. Uh, we have uh, been uh, actually uh, crafting, you know, some of these uh, guidelines, uh, which uh, we believe are would be a self-explanatory. I actually have them here. Uh, 
at, at which I can show uh, briefly, para lang makita nyo, uh, we will be posting this uh, sa Paase website. I don't think, uh, you know, uh, we have to be like uh, punitive or, or, or something, you know, uh, with, with regards to this, uh, ano lang, mga uh, payo about what uh, uh, one uh, should observe. Uh, uh, when uh, posting sa ating Paase Google Group. Let me just uh, open it. Sandali. Uh, and uh, I'll just show you uh, what uh, it contains. Uh, advisory for use of Paase Google Group. And then I will share my screen. Ito lang po. Uh, this is in a form of a letter uh, as far of our commitment to upholding the values of openness, free thinking, creativity, and innovation. We have established this advisory to ensure the fair and equitable use of the past Google Group. We aim to create a positive and inclusive environment for all members while being aware of the limitations of this mode of communication, both from the social and technological perspectives. The following guidelines are just suggested for the use of the past Google Group. Uh, using a clear and concise subject heading, prioritizing postings regarding past schedules, events, activities, uh, news milestones, on-site project implementation, DOSD and other or, uh, agencies' news and schedules with relevance to PASE and our own publications. Commercialization of personal discoveries and inventions of startup company milestones, important national and international news articles relating to academic universities' basic research discoveries, Technological inventions, universities' impact on government projects, industries, communities uh, may be shared. Announcements of personal talks, recorded lectures, speaking engagements, invitations, and travel should be sent to Paase info at info, uh, info Paase org for sharing through the Paase website instead. Hindi naman po ito hard and fast. Of course, uh, uh, we are uh, actually accommodating with regard to uh, uh, many uh, postings uh, uh, related to you know personal uh, preoccupations, uh, uh, speaking engagements, etc. Members who wish to have a regular column or blog may request space at the PASI website. In case of conflict, ito po yung suggested natin na procedures. Uh, any complaint about a member's use of the listserv should be brought to the attention of the moderator. The moderator should reach out to the concerned member for a dialogue regarding the complaint and for the latter to make adjustments regarding any infringement being complained about. A second complaint regarding the same practice or behavior may lead to the member receiving an advice of being placed on a moderated status upon approval of the BOD, the concerned member may appeal this decision to the BOD. A third complaint may lead to the member being placed on a moderated status for three months upon approval of the BOD, and a concerned member may appeal this decision to the BOD. We don't really expect any uh, of these you know, uh, infringements. We So far, we have been really very civil, and uh, 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 really uh, uh, the, our Google group has been uh, effective. It's just so that uh, there's a de uh, some demand for 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 us for me, you know, to just clarify uh, uh, and uh, give some advice. So it's po lang naman. So uh, if you have any comments uh, or suggestions or feedback, please uh, let let us know, and we are open to you know your your suggestions. Kung wala po, uh, maraming salamat. And uh, actually, that ends our meeting. Tama-tama, almost 10.30. <laughs> Baka pwede tayo mag-picture. Mag, uh, isa ulit na picture. Uh, okay. oh, isa pa, isa pang uh, picture. <laughs> Good to see everyone. Stay healthy, guys. I'll see you soon in our get-togethers. One, two, three, smile. Another one for one, two, three, smile. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy Happy birthday, birthday. I just want to apologize for being sometimes too frank in my comment. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, Bye. 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 Uh, those who are in the DC area, meron pong get together sa Saturday at 1 p.m. in Bethesda sa bahay ni Sebel de Terra Wadley.
just in case wow. you will be in town. Si Marge na lang sa DC area, pero mag-a-attend. Diba? <laughs> Marge, uh, tayo. Yeah. Oo. Uh, 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 Mario, hindi mo tinanong kay Al kung dadating siya? Si sa Al, Florida. si Rafika? Uh-huh. Uh, oo. Oo. Uh, hindi pa sure. Actually, tinanong ko na. So, okay. May travel yata sila, but uh, not in this area. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Elmer. Thank, Thank you, you, my master, Lisa, Senya, Bye. 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 Thank you. Good Good evening. Evening. See you on Saturday. Okay, bye. 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 Okay. Oh, sorry. Hindi yeah. bali, bali lulu, pwede ka rin magpadala ng pagkain, miski na wala ka. Gusto mo. Ano pa rin na naman? Lulu, yung pansit malabon. Ako? Ako? Pansit malabon. Si Pagyo. Challenge. O si Marge, oh. nag-volunteer. Ano pa daw kailangan na food? I heard her. Oh. Oh. Lulu, so bad. She's a good cook. She's good. Ano po ba Lisa? Lisa, meron pa. <laughs> Any food, welcome. Ano ka naman kumain? Si Elmer! Si Elmer, pabilan, pabilan mo ng ano, ng lumpia. It's from ano. Sa New York? Sa New York, maraming pagkain. Galing pa sa New York. Galing sa New York. Four hour drive lang naman, uh, Elmer. Or two and a half. Bye. Three and a half. Three and a half. See you Saturday. Bye bye. Enjoy. Okay. Send pictures. Yes, Okay. Thank you very much. Congrats, Mario. Yay. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. Great job, Mario. Na A pams naman. A pams naman. Oi, may four speakers na ako. Yeah, hey. Okay, na ako. Oh wow. Sa ano sa panel session ba? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, na ako. One more. Thank you. Thank you, Feb. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Feb. Thank you, Doctor Clark. Doctor Feb. Thank you, Doctor Feb. Okay, bye. 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 Okay, bye.